Assalamu alaikum dear students, I am Noor Muhammad, your English teacher and today I am going to discuss with you the fourth major word class which is adjective. We have already discussed noun, pronoun and verb. This is the time to have a detailed discussion on adjective. I am going to begin with a simple definition of adjective. What is adjective? Adjective is a word that describes or modifies a noun or pronoun. I repeat, adjective is a word that describes or modifies a noun or pronoun. Here it is written. So, adjective is a word that describes or modifies a noun or pronoun. Kids, there are two important elements, two important parts of this definition that you need to keep in mind. Number one, an adjective is a describing word. An adjective is a modifying word. This is the function that is performed by an adjective. If any word performs this function of modification or description, this word can be called as an adjective. But the second qualification, the second part of the definition is that the word, a word must describe a noun or a pronoun to qualify for the status of an adjective. So keep these two basic things in your mind, basic principles in your mind. The function of an adjective is to describe a noun or a pronoun to modify a noun or a pronoun and second thing is that it has a relationship with noun or pronoun as I have just mentioned. So keep these, these two things in mind. If a word describes or modifies or adds more information to any other word which is not noun or pronoun then it will not be called as an adjective. It may be called as any other part of speech, any other word class, but not an adjective. This is something that you need to keep in mind. Let me give you a practical demonstration of how a word can actually describe a noun or pronoun, how a word can actually modify a noun or pronoun. Let me give you an illustration or a simple demonstration, remember. So because it has a relationship with noun, or pronoun. So let's talk about that first. So I'm going to use the word girl. A girl clearly is a noun. So this is a noun. So now I'm going to use a word that will describe this noun girl. I'm going to use a word that will modify this word girl which is a noun so girl no doubt is a noun because it refers to a person so now if i use the term tall girl see this word tall describes girl what is the meaning of describe describe basically means to say something about so when a word says something about a noun or a pronoun it is called as an adjective this is the simplest possible concept of describing word okay so keep that in mind tall is actually it describes the girl so tall says something about girl so girl is a noun so a word that says something about a noun is called as an adjective that is the simplest possible conceptual definition or conceptual analysis of what is the function of an adjective so keep that in mind not only tall is a describing word tall is also a modifier a modifier of girl which is a noun so what is the meaning of modification well literally modification means change a word that changes the meaning a word that changes the meaning of a noun or pronoun is also called as an adjective description is also in a way a change in the meaning of a noun or pronoun how let me show you you know when i say 
tall girl. So there is a difference between girl and tall girl. When you use the word tall before a girl, it changes the meaning of girl. It adds something extra to the word girl which is a noun. So this is called modification. Bringing a difference. Adding a difference. So tall actually makes girl different from a simple word girl. So there is a difference between girl and tall girl. The word that has brought the difference is tall in the meaning of girl. What is a girl? Girl is a noun. Any word that changes the meaning or brings difference in the meaning of a noun or pronoun is called as an adjective. This is how tall performs the function of description, describing or modification. So this is why it is called as an adjective and because it actually deals with girl which is a noun. In the same decades we can use the term like this. For example, old computer. Now clearly if you look at this one computer this is actually a noun why is it a noun because the word computer refers to a thing so noun is a word that refers to a person to a place or to a thing so by this definition computer clearly is a noun so this word or says something about computer which is a noun saying something means describing so in this way old says something about computer so it means old describes computer and because computer is a noun any word that describes a noun will be called as an adjective and you can also say that there is a difference if you talk about modification the concept of modification there is a difference between computer and old computer every computer is not old so there is a difference between computer and old computer what has made the difference old in the meaning of what computer computer is a noun so a word that makes difference that changes the meaning of a noun or pronoun is called as an adjective so that's why old in this example can be called as an adjective this is something that you need to keep in mind and then i can also give some other examples for example modification of a pronoun how modification of a pronoun takes place typically modification of a pronoun takes place in a different way description of a pronoun takes place in a different way how for example i can say he is brave now this is a pronoun which has been used instead of a noun and he may mean a person called Ali. So he actually is a pronoun and this word brave describes he. It is saying something about he. It is saying something about this person he. So because brave is about this word he. Because brave says something about he, which is a pronoun. So by this definition, because this word brave says something about a pronoun he, this word brave describes he, which is a pronoun. So that's why it will be called as an adjective. Why? Because adjective is a word that describes a noun or a pronoun. So we have already had examples of how adjectives or how words describe, how words modify pronoun nouns. But this is an example of how a word modifies or how a word describes a pronoun. So keep that in mind. So in the same way, it is actually a modifying word as well. Why? Because he, simple he and brave he are two different things, remember. So because it adds information, it makes difference it changes the simple meaning of he adds something extra into a pronoun so that's why it will also be called as an adjective so this is how words like tall this is how words like old and words like brave describe nouns or pronouns this is how these words actually 
modify nouns or pronouns this is a simple illustration demonstration of how a word can describe a noun or pronoun how a word can modify a noun or pronoun and thus qualify for the status of an adjective this is something that you need to keep in mind that's it let's extend our discussion kids adjectives we are familiar with adjectives we know that they are the words that describe nouns or pronouns they are the words that modify nouns or pronouns but sometimes we get confused why because sometimes even a verb can be used as a noun or sorry can be used as an adjective here lies the confusion you are familiar with the word as a verb you know that this word has different forms and you know you you just consider it as a verb but sometimes if a verb like word if a word that looks like a verb if it performs the same function that it describes a noun then it describes a pronoun that it modifies a noun or pronoun then this apparently verb like word will be called as an adjective as well why because basically it is about function that a word performs so any word any word whether you consider it as a verb you are familiar with it as a verb or you are familiar with it as a noun or maybe you are familiar with it in any other way if it performs the function of describing a noun or pronoun if it performs the function of describe modifying a noun or pronoun then it will be called as an adjective so let's extend our discussion and include verbs how sometimes words that look like verbs can also be used as an adjective they can modify nouns or pronouns how and particularly i'm going to talk about two forms of verb i delivered an extensive lecture on verb and i told you that verbs in english have six forms base form of the verb general present tense form of the verb and third person singular form of the verb past form of the verb past participle form of the verb and present participle form of the verb there are two forms of the verb that can modify nouns or pronouns there are out of these six forms there are two forms of verb that can describe a noun or pronoun and therefore they can also be called as adjectives and what are those two forms number 1 past participle form which we also call as third form of the verb number 2 present participle form of the verb ing form which we also call as the sixth or the fourth form of the verb these two forms of the verbs can kids kids they can modify nouns or pronouns they can change or describe the meaning of noun or pronoun so therefore they can be used as an adjective they can easily be used as adjectives so for example let's take examples of present participles first of all let me this take example of this one teaching now clearly teaching is you can clearly see teaching is actually the fourth form of the verb i am teaching english here we have used the word teach as a verb but it is in this example in this sentence this is only a verb it shows action as we have already discussed it but if the word teaching does not show action it describes a noun or a pronoun if it modifies a noun or pronoun then it will be called as an adjective and here is a practical demonstration for example teaching staff simply speaking 
teaching staff now what is staff staff is a noun it's a collective noun it refers to a collection of persons and what about teaching teaching describes staff teaching says something about staff so this word teaching says something about staff this word teaching modifies the meaning of staff every staff is not a teaching staff administrative staff there are so many other forms of staff so there is a difference between staff and teaching staff there is a difference between i repeat staff and teaching staff this word teaching has brought difference has changed the meaning of staff which is a noun so therefore this word teaching will be called as an adjective in the same way kids we can say that the word teaching describes the word teaching describes staff which is a noun so it will definitely be called as an adjective this is something that you need to keep in mind we can simply you know we can take it out and we can use intelligent staff hard working staff honest staff dutiful staff loyal staff all of them loyal dutiful hard working intelligent all of them are adjectives because all of them actually are describing staff which is a noun all of them are modifying staff which is a noun if they are loyal if loyal if dutiful if hard working if intelligent they are adjectives because they describe staff which is a noun they are adjectives because they modify the meaning of staff which is a noun then teaching also in the same way modifies the meaning of staff so it should also be called as an adjective this is something that i want you to keep in mind in the same way kids we can use many other you know for example cooking expert see expert is actually a noun it refers to a person and cooking clearly is the fourth form of the verb as well and if you look let me give you an example i am cooking rice in this example cooking is a verb because it shows an action but the same word cooking which is the fourth form of the verb which is the present participle form of the verb it can modify a noun it can be used in such a way that it says something about a noun it describes a noun or a pronoun in that case it will be called as an adjective and this is exactly the same case so cooking staff cooking expert so kids there is a difference between expert and cooking expert so cooking has modified the meaning of expert so there is a difference between expert and cooking expert so what has brought the difference cooking in the meaning of what expert expert is a noun so a word that modifies the meaning of a noun is called as an adjective and in the same way we can say that the word cooking describes expert so all experts are not cooking experts so the word expert describes so the word cooking describes expert so that's why it will be called as an adjective although apparently the word cooking and the word teaching they look like verbs they are the they are generally considered as the present participle forms of verb but just because they are performing the function of an adjective that's why they are going to be called as adjectives remember this is something that you need to keep in mind that's the conceptual foundation the conceptual basis of an adjective in the same way past participle form of the verb can also be used as an adjective the third form of the verb can also be used as an adjective what are the third forms for example this question has confused me your performance has disappointed me in both these examples the word confused and the word disappointed are actually past participle forms of verb third forms of verb because they show action as well but remember kids the same disappointed 
the same confused can be used in such a way that they describe a noun they describe a pronoun they modify a noun or they modify a pronoun in such cases they will be called as adjectives this is something that you need to keep in mind for example i can say parents so parents you know that the word parents is actually a noun why because parents refer to persons so it's a noun and if i use the word disappointed disappointed parents so clearly the word disappointed describes parents and what are parents parents is a noun so a word that describes a noun is called as an adjective see in the same way we can say there is a difference between parents and disappointed parents there is a difference between parents and disappointed parents so a word which makes a difference in the meaning of a noun that modifies the meaning of a noun is also called as an adjective so this is a describing word of a noun this is a modifying word of a noun so that's why in this example disappointed which is apparently a past participle form of the verb will be called as an adjective because it's performing the function of an adjective keep that in mind in the same way i told you student students is also a noun because it refers to persons so it's a noun but if i use the word confused confused students now see there is a difference between confused sorry there is a difference between students and confused students what has made the difference confused in the meaning of what students so what is students students is a noun so a word that changes the meaning of a noun that makes difference in the meaning of a noun is called as an adjective in the same way not only it modifies it also describes so the word confused says something about students and saying means describing the word confused says something about students and what are students noun so a word that says something about a noun will be called as an adjective because this is called describing a noun so this is by this definition we can say confused is actually an adjective see this is something that you need to keep in mind past and present participial adjectives mean present participle form of the verb and past participle form of the verb can be used as adjectives if they describe a noun or pronoun they describe they modify a noun or pronoun that's the only if they do not show actions if they do not show events if they do not show states they just describe nouns or pronouns they just modify the meaning of nouns or pronouns then they will qualify for the status of adjectives not verbs remember this is something that you need to keep in mind but there is a slight semantic difference functional difference functional as well as semantic remember that this present participle form when it is used as an adjective it is called as active adjective when past participle form of the verb is used as an adjective it is called patient adjective what is the difference between active adjective what is an active adjective and what is a patient adjective simple active mean that performs action that affects others and what is patient that is affected by others so if an adjective shows performance it shows activity on the part of the noun that comes after it then it will be called as an active adjective and if on the other hand an adjective just shows the influence the effect upon the noun or pronoun that comes after it then remember it will be called as a passion adjective for example teaching staff what does it mean it simply means the staff does this action of teaching simple the staff does this action of teaching and what about cooking expert simple the expert that cooks and he knows about cooking so it's active see and on the other hand if you look at this one disappointed parents 
parents do not perform the action parents do not disappoint somebody rather they are affected they are being disappointed see disappointed parents has an adjective disappointed and it is special because the word disappointed shows parents are affected by disappointment in the same way confused students in this case too the word confused is an adjective but it is a special adjective why that students are not confusing somebody they are not active rather they are being affected by confusion so they receive confusion this is the difference between passion adjectives and active adjectives so present participle forms of the verb they typically perform the function of active adjectives and past participle forms of the verb they typically perform the function of what we call as passion adjectives this is something kids you need to keep in mind The next thing that we are going to discuss in regard with adjectives is the uses of adjectives. Kids, adjectives no doubt perform the function of describing words, modifying words. They modify or describe nouns or pronouns. That's fine. But there are many ways in which we can use nouns to modify or to describe, sorry, in which we can use adjectives to modify nouns or pronouns. Keep that in mind. So there are three ways in which we can use adjectives to modify nouns or pronouns and what are they the first use of adjective is called as attributive use what is this use all these examples except for this one this example this example this one this one this one this one all these examples were actually the examples of distributive use sorry attributive use of adjectives what is attributive use when an adjective is used before the noun or pronoun that's called as attributive use of an adjective and we have this so see it's a noun and tall has the adjective has been used before the noun in the same way old which is an adjective has been used before the noun computer and in this example teaching which is an adjective has been used before the, 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 the noun staff all of them are actually examples of attributive use of adjectives but there is another way of using it and it is called as predicative use what is a predicative use in this case noun or pronoun or even noun phrase is used before the adjective but there is a verb in the middle and then remember there is an adjective if this is the structure of a sentence of a clause then this adjective will be called as a predicative adjective i mean we will call this use of adjective as predicative use of adjective for example i have just given this example remember it's a pronoun and then this is a verb and this is an adjective this is called predicative use of an adjective see this adjective has not been used before the pronoun it has been used after the pronoun with a with an intervening verb with a verb in the middle i can use other examples too for example ali is a ali is brave okay now see i can say she is intelligent see intelligent is about she a pronoun brave is about ali a noun so this is an adjective and this is an adjective because both of them are describing pronouns and nouns so this is something that you need to keep in mind intelligent describes a pronoun so it's an adjective brave describe a noun so it's an adjective but just because it has been used after the verb and the noun or pronoun that they describe actually have have been used before so this is an example of what we call as attributive sorry predicative use of an adjective so keep that in mind remember so this is the predicative use in attributive use adjective is used before noun or pronoun and it modifies it like this but in case of predicative use the adjective is used after the verb and it modifies a noun or pronoun then is post positive use what is a post positive use it's, it goes like this it is noun pronoun and then remember 
an adjective and it describes it. There are very few examples of post positive use of adjectives. Typically, adjective is used before a noun or pronoun. Typically, a pronoun, an, a, a noun. An adjective is used before a noun and it describes the noun. And if it is used after the noun or pronoun, then there is a verb in the middle. But sometimes, on very few occasions, we can use an adjective in such a way that it comes after the noun or pronoun, but there is no verb in the middle. And there are very special adjectives that are used solely in this way. For example, I can say proper. This word. And the proper doesn't mean suitable. Here proper means in sense of location. And exactly in that sense. Pure. That sense. Remember, this is an adjective. And now when you say, you can say Haripur proper. Haripur is a noun. And it describes Haripur. What does it mean? I live in Haripur. People, somebody may ask me, do you live in Haripur? I say, yes, I live in Haripur. Do you live in Haripur proper? I mean, do you live exactly in the city Haripur or maybe in the suburbs, maybe in the surrounding areas, surrounding villages? So that's the meaning of proper. Proper means exactly at the same place, remember. So that this proper, if it is used in this sense, in this meaning, it will always be used after the noun, not before noun. You can never say, I live in proper Haripur. That's incorrect. Always say, I use in Harip, I live in Haripur proper. So keep that in mind. In the same way, we can say, authorities concerned. So, concern is an adjective. And authorities, clearly it, it is plural, it's a noun. So it's a noun. And it describes it. See, authorities concerned. And typically in Urdu we say, mutallaka intazamiya. Mutallaka intazamiya. Now this word concern is, if it is used in this sense, it is always used after the noun, not before the noun. If concern means worried, then you can use it before the noun. Concerned parents, worried parents. But if you use concern in this sense, related, mutallika, relevant. So at that time, you are going to use the word concern after the noun, not before the noun. So we request the authorities concerned to take steps. In other words, we request the relevant authorities to take steps. So see, the word, like, the adjectives like concern, proper, elect, designate, they are typically used after the nouns that they modify after the nouns that they describe not before them keep that in mind as far as pronouns are concerned there are almost hardly any examples of pronouns that have an adjective after them and that describes them but there is one pronoun that is typically traditionally used in this way and what is it this is someone someone is a pronoun you know that very well and if i say someone intelligent okay intelligent is an adjective and someone is a pronoun see it's a pronoun i can use it in a sentence i need i need someone intelligent for this job intelligent is about someone someone is a pronoun so intelligent is an adjective because it is describing the pronoun someone but see, it has been used after the pronoun, not before the pronoun. Someone tall. I need someone tall. For example, to pluck or to pick fruit for us. I need someone hardworking for this job. So someone can frequently be used, traditionally be used in this way. So this, these are the three uses of adjectives. Attributive use. Adjective is used before a noun or pronoun. Predicative use. Adjective is used after the noun or pronoun and with a verb in the middle. And post positive use. When an adjective is used after the noun or pronoun but there is no verb in the middle. This was our discussion of three major uses of adjective. Let's come towards the next topic. Degrees of adjective. You know... Some
some words among the word classes some parts of speech or some word classes they can change their shape their form you know verbs are very famous for them verbs can change their shapes go goes walk walks walking walked and then nouns can also change their shapes nouns can also change their forms for example you can say mango then mangoes mouse then mice from singular to plural typically nouns in english change because of nouns because of number typically in english language nouns change because of the change in the number and in the same way chair chairs and person persons we can use it forum fora medium media so stadium stadia we can change the verb sorry the nouns in english when we change the number adjectives as far as the adjectives are concerned adjectives can also change their shapes adjectives also change their shapes they also change their forms depending upon the degree the shiddat if you are talking about no degree then there will be no change if you are talking talking about a greater degree then definitely there will be a change if you are talking about the greatest degree then clearly you will have to change it so we call them as degrees degrees simply mean stages intensification you can simply call that as intensification adjectives are actually typically properties they can increase and decrease they can have a high rank or low rank because properties can have high ranks and low ranks they can have high degree or low degree so adjectives in english language and in other languages as well they have different degrees and in english language adjectives have three major degrees and they are called as degrees of adjective one is called positive degree of the adjective the second one is called as comparative degree of adjective and the third one is called as superlative degree of adjectives let's discuss the first degree of adjective which is called positive and i have divided them into three categories monosyllabic consisting of one syllable and you know what is syllable when i delivered lecture on meter sound rhythm at that time i explained what is rhythm so what is mono syllabic words words that have only one syllable they the adjectives that have one syllable mono syllabic the adjectives that have two syllables disyllabic and have y at the end two adjectives consisting of two syllables having y at the end and the third example is the third kind is multisyllabic having two or more than two syllables but not having y at the end we are not talking about that remember so monosyllabic nice brave strong simple short words consisting of one syllable disyllabic having two syllables but having y at the end pretty two syllables pretty and it has a y at the end heavy two syllables heavy and it has a y at the end happy two syllables happy and it has a y at the end this is the second type of you know positive degree of adjective and then multisyllabic having two or more having two syllables but not y at the end or having more syllables handsome two syllables but no y at the end intelligent in te li gent four syllables be be beautiful be you t full three syllables so these are the three types of positive degrees monosyllabic disyllabic with a y multisyllabic and then when we change them for comparison when we compare when we use adjectives in such a way that 
they are used for comparison then we use comparative degrees for example monosyllabic in case of comparison we will use er nicer braver stronger there is only a use of er at the end in case of monosyllabic adjectives er nicer er braver er stronger and in case of disyllabic words with y then use of i e r in case of disyllabic with y at the end we are going to use i e r for example prettier for example heavier for example happier he is happier than us for comparison okay she is prettier than them for example comparison and then multisyllabic use of more only use of more more handsome most handsome more handsome more intelligent more beautiful not handsomer handsomest or intelligenter or intelligent or beautifuler no not like that only a use of more before them more handsome more intelligent more beautiful i hope you are getting my point i'm just running through my lecture hurrying through my lecture so coming towards the last degree superlative degree when you consider someone having a quality greater than all the others so this is something you know that is called as superlative degree in case of monosyllabic there is a use of est in case of disyllabic there is a use of iest in case of multisyllabic there is a use of most for example use it nicest est monosyllabic nicest bravest strongest disyllabic with with y iest prettiest heaviest happiest he is the happiest guy he is the heaviest man she is the prettiest girl so you can use that and in the same way we can say multisyllabic there is a use of most you will use most handsome most intelligent he is the most intelligent student of the class in comparison with all the other superlative degree is used when somebody has a quality greater than all the others remember so keep that in mind and then we can say most beautiful so this is how we can have three types of inflections er or iest and then more or most more or most are analytical inflections not really inflections changes changes inflection mean changes so this is how all the adjectives have three degrees simple one when we use it for comparison with some or with one when we use it to comparison with all so superlative so this is something that you need to keep in mind next thing that i want to discuss with you is kids kinds of adjectives what are the kinds of adjectives kids here they are written most of the adjectives are actually the adjectives of evaluation or adjectives of opinion intelligent brave honest strong all of them are actually adjectives of evaluation because you evaluate somebody you give your opinion about somebody he is intelligent this is your opinion this is your evaluation of somebody he is strong he is honest so this is why these adjectives are called as adjectives of evaluation or opinion and most of the adjectives in english are adjectives of evaluation or opinion adjectives of size large big small little adjectives of shape round square rectangular adjectives of age new old fresh adjectives of color red blue yellow green all the colors adjective of origin i mean the place the region that they belong to chinese american for example sindhi balochi and for example londoner not really london london is a noun actually so all of them are actually <clears throat> so uh indian australian these are adjectives of origin adjectives of material you know that material wooden made of wood wooden plastic and iron so all of them are actually adjectives gold or even golden 
so silver all of them are they can also be used as adjective silver is noun as well as adjective golden is an adjective and in the same way we can use wooden and plastic as adjectives remember so they are the adjectives of material these are kids the six one two three four five six seven seven kinds of adjective keep in mind next important thing that i want to discuss with you kids is the order of adjectives the sequence of adjectives what do you mean by i mean when sometimes sometimes you are required to but sometimes you are required to use two or more than two adjectives before a noun sometimes you are required to make use of two or more than two adjectives before a noun now how will you use them which adjective should be used earlier and which should be used later which which adjective should be should be used before and which adjective should be used after so what is is there any rule is there any any regulation yes there is a typical rule that is followed and it is the same one adjective of evaluation or opinion are used before the adjectives of size the adjective of size is used before the adjective of shape the adjective of evaluation size shape are used before the adjectives of age color origin or material in the same way the adjective of color is used before the adjective of origin the adjective of origin is used before the adjective of material and here are examples don't get confused here are some examples strong is an adjective of evaluation big is an adjective of size and table is a noun see so we have used the adjective of evaluation earlier and adjective of size later you cannot say big strong table you will have to say strong big table because adjective of evaluation come earlier than the adjectives of size in the same way beautiful small brown cat three adjectives used before cat beautiful an adjective of evaluation small an adjective of size brown an adjective of color so sequence is the same first this one then this one then this one so see even if there are no you know adjectives of shape in the middle no problem at all but the sequence should be the same follow the sequence all the time even if all of them are not used together and in the same way nice white chinese chair nice is an adjective of evaluation white is an adjective of color and chinese is an adjective of material the sequence is fine so they are in the proper order big round wooden table big is an adjective of size round is an adjective of shape and wooden is an adjective of material see so there the sequence is fine this is how you can use them you cannot use round big wooden table you cannot use wooden big round table you cannot use white nice chinese chair you cannot say chinese nice white chair follow the sequence and this is the sequence adjective of evaluation are used earlier then size then shape then age then color then origin then material i hope you are following me in the end kids i am going to share with you tips to identify an adjective i mean if there is a sentence written if there is a sentence written and there is an underlined word and you are asked to analyze it identify which part of speech this is so kids <coughs> so you are required so if you are asked which part of speech this word is then remember you can apply this tip or tips upon the word to judge or to determine whether this is an adjective or this is not an adjective and the first one is use of intensifiers see an adjective can be intensified an adjective can take an intensifier what is intensifier simple shiddat increase in the degree or decrease in the degree for example there are some very famous intensifiers very extremely for example all of them are there and you can use others as well remember <coughs> hardly if a word takes very before it then it will be called as an adjective and for example i write he is brave is it an adjective underline word so use very before it so you can use the word very he is very brave yes it's correct the sentence is not incorrect you can easily use brave before sorry you can use easily use very before brave and intensify the degree of brave 
So that is something that, quite, that is quite perfect. There is nothing wrong with it. So we can call brave as an adjective. On the other hand, he is a doctor. Okay? And if you are asked to use very, he is a very doctor. He is very doctor. Incorrect. So it means that this is not actually an adjective. This is not an adjective. See, in the same way, he eats a lot. And if somebody asks you, what is eat as a part of speech? Use very before it. He very eats. Leave it. He very eats. He eats apples. Let's use this sentence. He eats apples. And if somebody asks you, what is eats? Use very before eats. He very eats apple. Is it correct? No, it's not correct. So it means eats is not actually an adjective. So one of the ways of, remember, identifying an adjective is to use an adjective before it and find it out, like extremely or very. The next one is inflection. And I've just told you, like uh, an adjective, if it is monosyllabic, it can be inflected with er or est. Nice, nice, and nicest. Brave, braver, bravest. Okay? Or if it is multisyllabic, then it can get beautiful, more beautiful, most beautiful. See? It can easily. But you cannot say, doctor, more doctor, most doctor. Incorrect. And eats, more eats, most eats. No. And in the same way, you cannot say, doctor, doctorer, doctorest. Eat, eat, eater, eatest. So these are some of the very simple tips to identify an adjective. Use of intensifier. Use intensifier. If it is, it can easily be used before a word, it will be called as an adjective. And the second one, use, inf use of inflections. Inflection means change of a word. If a word can be changed with er or est or with more or most in the beginning, it will be called as an adjective. I hope kids, you have understood everything that I've tried to explain today. I just hurried through the lecture to keep it to a manageable limit. Thank you very much. Hope you have enjoyed it. Assalamu alaikum.